Here's a solid mechanics question that first year engineering students might encounter whether they're doing aerospace, mechanical, ship science, or civil engineering. And if you'd like to see anything similar to this in the future, or if you have any suggestions for any topics or problems, let me know in the comments. So in this question, we have to find, or we have to draw the shear force and the bending moment diagrams for this beam that we have, okay? And as with any beam problem, the first thing to do uh, that I recommend doing is to find the reaction forces. So I'll draw the free body diagram and then I'll put all the forces acting. So we have the force P and then we have the two reaction forces. We have a reaction at A and we have a reaction at B. Now, because those are simple supports, Technically, we would have some horizontal forces as well, right? So we would have a reaction like this and like this at point B, but uh, they don't actually help us with anything. So we'll just ignore them. And you'll see that we can do the problem even if we don't consider them. So uh, a quick way to find what we're looking for is take moments about point B, right? And we're going to say that the sum of moments about point B is equal to zero. Okay, and we're going to consider counterclockwise as positive. So about point B, we have the moment due to the reaction Ra, which we don't know. So that's a clockwise moment. That's Ra multiplied by L, right? So this distance is L, and this distance is A. And the moment due to this force P is counterclockwise. So that's going to be plus P times L minus A. And the whole thing is zero. So RA will be P multiplied by L minus A over L. Okay, so that's the reaction force at A. Now, because we're trying to find the bending moment and the shear force diagram, um, what I would suggest is because we have a point load P, uh, let's try to consider what happens before the point load and then we'll consider what happens after the point load. Okay. In other words, I'm going to uh, draw a cross section uh, somewhere here and this is going to be at the distance X away from the left hand side of the beam. Okay. So this is what we have. This is the section of the beam under consideration. Um, and we have a reaction at A. So this is our RA that we just found. And then here we have a shear force. Yeah, where the cross section is, we have a shear force that we don't know. And we have a bending moment that we also don't know. Note we don't have point, uh, we don't have point load P yet because our X hasn't reached that uh, part of the beam. So we're using we're considering the case when x is between 0 and a like this okay and let's try to find the shear force so we have that the sum of moments acting in the y direction has to be 0 okay where upwards is positive so we have ra minus s is equal to 0 so the shear force is equal to ra which is equal to P times L minus A over L. Okay, so this is our shear force uh, for X between zero and A. Okay, so in other words, that's the shear force for this uh, part of the beam. And now we're going to find the moment for that part of the beam as well. So we have the sum of moments about point P is equal to zero, where counterclockwise is positive. Okay, so the moments that we're going to take are going to be about this point here that yeah, we call it point P. And we have two moments. So we have M, which is our unknown bending moment. And then we have the moment due to this force, which is clockwise. So that's going to be minus RA times X, and that's zero. So the moment is RA X. So that's P times L minus A over L times X. So we found the moment 
and we found the shear force as well. But those are only applicable when we're considering the part of the beam, the first part of the beam from zero to A. Okay? So if we draw the shear force diagram that we got so far, this is how that would look like. So this is X, this is the shear force, and this is A, and let's say this is L, right? So the shear force doesn't actually depend on X, as you see. So it's a constant. So it's P times L minus A over L. If you had numbers for the point load and numbers for the length of the beam, you could put those in here and you could get um, what value that is, right? So in our case, it's a constant that has this value and it's constant from zero to L, to, from zero to A. And that's it. And we can do the same thing for the bending moment. So I'm going to draw the bending moment diagram underneath. And we're going to fill those in as we find more things. Okay, so let's draw a line here. And the bending moment, as opposed to the shear force, does depend on x in a linear fashion. Okay, so when x is zero, then the bending moment is zero. And when x is a, so if you substitute x with a, you're going to get that m uh, calculated in a is p l minus a over l times a. So let's draw a here, and then we have l here. And what the bending moment does is it increases linearly until this point, and this point is given to us by p l minus a over l times a. Okay, we don't know what happens beyond A, and this is what we're going to try to discover now. So, let's now take another cross-section, maybe somewhere here. Okay, so we're going to extend the X. So now the X is going to be going from here to here. Okay, in other words, our X will be between A and L. So A less than or equal to X less than or equal to L. And the free body diagram will now include the point load. Okay, so we have RA acting here. We have the point load, which is, let's say, somewhere here maybe. Okay, and the distances. So we have A from here to here. And the whole length that we're considering is x. So we just we're, we're looking at a section of that of the beam, and we have a shear force here that we, we're trying to find, and we have a bending moment that we're also trying to find. And let's call this point. Uh, let's not call it p. Let's call it c, maybe. So the first thing to do is to find the shear force. So we have R a which is acting up, and then minus P minus S is equal to zero. So the shear force S is R A minus P, okay? So if we go to the next page, R A was P times L minus A over L, and then minus P, okay? And if you multiply P by L, uh, top and bottom, that would give you P, times uh, L minus A minus L over L, okay? Now the L and the minus L would cancel out, which means that the shear force would just be minus P A over L. So here's the interesting thing. Uh, well, first of all, this shear force uh, also doesn't depend on X. So it's a constant similar to the shear force that we got for the first part of the beam. Now, in addition to that, we ended up with a minus sign here. And the minus tells us that the direct, the true direction of this shear force is opposite to what we assumed. So we assume this shear force to be acting downwards according to our usual sign convention or direction convention. And the minus sign tells us that the shear force here uh, beyond the A distance is acting upwards 
okay? So it's negative um, according to our sign convention. So if we draw that, if we try drawing that on this uh, shear force diagram, uh, we have to take um, a negative value. So this is minus P A over L. This is the new shear force, which is occurring from A to L. And this gives us a full picture of the shear force diagram. And that's how it looks like. So the shear force uh, is constant until A, and it's equal to another constant from A to L. And because of the point load, and this is a, a feature of point loads usually, they create jumps in the values of the shear force. See, so there's a, there's a constant value here, and then there's a step decrease in that value to another constant, which um, keeps occurring until B, uh, the other end of the beam. And now we're going to try to figure out the same thing for the bending moment. Okay, so let's say that the sum of moments about point C is equal to zero, so counterclockwise is positive. Okay, so what we have is M as our first moment. This is what we're trying to find. And then RA is producing a clockwise moment. And the moment is minus RAX. And P is producing a counterclockwise moment. So that's going to be plus P multiplied by the moment arm, which is X minus A. Right? You can see that from the diagram. And that's going to be equal to zero. So the moment is going to be equal to RAX minus P times X minus A. Okay. So M is RA, so RA was P, L minus A over L times X, uh, minus P times X minus A. Okay, so what we can then do is we can factorize P, and this is L minus A over L X minus X minus A. So we can now multiply by L, uh, top and bottom, and we get the moment is P uh, times, and then we have LX minus AX. So I'm multiplying the X, uh, I'm distributing the X to L and A, and then we have minus LX plus LA. And this is divided by L. So you can see that LX cancels out with minus LX, and we get that the moment as a function of X is going to equal and we have the following so i'm going to distribute the i'm going to split the fraction uh, uh, in a certain way so i'm going to write the positive term first so that's p l a over l and then i have minus p a x over l okay so the l and the l cancel out so the moment as a function of x is p a minus uh, P A X over L, which is a linear function. It, this is a linear function with a negative gradient. And you can uh, see that because A, L, and P are all positive, and then there's a minus in front of this uh, term containing X, which means that you have a negative slope. Okay, and this is the Y intercept, of course. So, um, you can therefore use that equation to draw how that um, how the final part of the bending moment diagram looks like. Okay, and you can convince yourself that the bending moment diagram will look like this. So this this equation uh, corresponds to this uh, line with a negative slope. Okay. And this shows you that the shear force diagram is made up of two parts, which uh, they're both constants, but uh, they're different. And then the bending moment diagram is made of two linear functions, which are joined here. Okay. And then the, uh, the bending moment is 
uh, 0 at 0, and it's also 0 when x is equal to L. And that's the end of the question.